Hey, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today in Better Than Yourself, I want to make some curtido. Curtido is a, a, a Latin American sauerkraut. I, a couple of people have been asking me for, uh, hey John, you know, it's, it's, we need a new ferment, we want to do something new. It's the middle of summer here in North America and you really can't do a good a good sauerkraut in the warm weather. You, when you ferment, uh, you know, you, I want to ferment my, my slaw, I, I want to do this at about 60 to 70 degrees. It's something that you make in the fall. A sauerkraut is a, is a fall crop. Um, so I got thinking, well, what do they do in, in Latin America? What do they do where in the hot climates where there are eating cabbage? You, I'm sure people eat cabbage everywhere. How do, you, how, do you, how do you ferment cabbage in Latin America? So I got looking at it and found cortito. And it's a super simple recipe. And I think it's going to be fun because we can make it and eat it in just a couple of days. If you watch my sauerkraut video, or, or this one, you, you can see I, I like to ferment my sauerkraut for, you know, four weeks, six weeks, a couple of months. And th what that does is it really puts a nice mellow flavor on the, on the, on the harsh, you know, the, the cabbage. Cabbage is kind of a, a you know, bitter, um, harsh vegetable. Um, so what I like to do is ferment my cabbage for a long time at cooler temperatures. Like I said, about 60 to 70 degrees. But when, you know, your house is, I don't know, 74 degrees, it's the middle of July, I want to eat some delicious ferment. What we're going to do is cortito, which you can make, and I'll show you how to cut it up with what we've got here. Ferment it for just a couple of days right on the countertop, and we can eat this by the end of the week. So let's get right into it. Let's, let me show you what we're going to make. So we're going to do about a head of cabbage, find a nice, uh, a nice red onion, a couple of carrots, and then I've got fresh oregano. If you've seen uh, my, my oregano plant in the oregano uh, drying herbs video, um, you can use dried oregano. I'm, I'm just going to use this fresh just because I've got it on hand. But we're just going to cut this up, salt it, pack it in a jar. <laughs> you know the drill. If you're new to fermenting, stay tuned. This is super simple to make. So here, what are we, what are we gonna do? Just clear off your board. We're gonna do, um, I usually, do, you know, you can, you'll can you find recipes on the internet where it says, you know, you've gotta have two cups of cabbage and half a cup of, <laughs> I hate doing that because then, you know, what do you do with the rest of the cabbage that you were making crotito out of? So what I like to do, it's just kind of use whole vegetable increments instead of whole cup increments. So a head of cabbage, a red onion, um, a couple of carrots, and then I've got, I don't know, just some oregano. If you're using dried oregano, maybe like about a tablespoon for this amount of veg. And then we'll get into the salt when we get to that part of the recipe. But basically, all you gotta do is just chop all this stuff up and then, um, So we'll, the nice thing you want to do, I mean, we're, we're thinking about presentation. We're thinking about what you want to end up with. We want that, that nice, you know, that, that, that kind of sour slaw that when you get like pupusas and you get that little bit of slaw on the side, that's what we're making. That's cortito. So you just try to do your, uh, your best knife skills here. And we're just going to slice this into a real thin slaw. Okay, you may remember our uh, slicing technique. We're sliding the, the knife down the edge of our, our knuckles. We're not slicing our knuckles, we're just keeping the, the blade down below our knuckles. And we're gonna slice this as thinly as we possibly can. If your cabbage gets a little too big, unwieldy, work with a work with more manageable size. So just keep slicing. want to, if you've got a Cuisinart with the, you know, the, the shred blade in it, throw it in there, shred it right through, no problem. You know, use what you got, use what you're comfortable with. You can see I just kind of keep turning the, 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 the veg around, so I'm kind of slicing the largest possible size. I want to keep what I'm cutting, I want to keep my veg down hard on the board. I want to keep a flat surface down on the cutting surface. I don't want to, you know, you don't want to have this thing rolling around and your knife going all di different which ways. Keep your keep your vegetable just flat right on the surface here and keep slicing. Okay. 
You can see I'm sort of missing every once in a while because I'm, I'm trying to go thin. I don't want to, you know, cut off a, a, a three-quarter inch slice. I'm just kind of shaving it. So occasionally I'm going to get a, an infinitely thin slice of cabbage. But meanwhile, there's a root in there somewhere. Where's the core? The core's there. We're not going to put the core in. But we're going to slice the rest of this up. All right, there's half of it. Just load up a, get a big bowl, and uh, just, we're gonna chop all this stuff up and we're just gonna load it into a, a bowl where we can process it further. I'm gonna get that. This root, this is kinda, you know, where the root comes out. I'm gonna cut that out of there. Not great. There, so there's that. Um, it's just kind of tough. Doesn't make great cortito. I mean, if it, it's getting too small and you're getting a little anxious about your fingertips, <laughs> stop. <laughs> you only get one set of fingertips. And then uh, keep slicing. Awesome. All right, we got our cabbage sufficiently slawed. Next on the docket is a, a, a yeah, three, four carrots. If you like carrots, you can put some extra ones. I just sort of scrub these real quick with a with a vegetable brush. And then for these, you can slice them. I mean, you can go ahead and if you if you're good at with your knife, you can slice up some little some little rounds with them. Um, I'm gonna cheat. Get your get your box grater out. I mean, if you want, if you if you're you know, if we're waste conscious, we can instead of just dropping these little bits, you can go ahead and 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 work these through with your knife. And, not be so wasteful. And I don't know if you want the cap in there, but I like to make it pretty. I, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll level with you. I, I, I'm not opposed to a little bit of extra compost for, um, you know, something that's gonna come out pretty. I want this to look nice. I want this to, you know, when you're making food in your kitchen, you want to make things that, that, you know, people want to eat. They look at it and they go, wow, that looks delicious. I, I really want to taste that. And then you got them. You know, hook, line, and sinker. So you know, try to try to make things that that look nice and, and people want to eat. And then you know, you kind of captured your prey. Um, take the the root end off, and then figure out a kind of tactful way to get a good bit of the peel off the top there. And then you can just peel the the dried out part off. And then when you've got it down to a manageable size here. Got some. Right? We're gonna do just again nice thin strips long as best you can, nice and thin. And we can get those in there. And we're getting some nice pretty colors, right? We got this purple onion, this red onion, the green cabbage, the orange from the carrot. And we're really, we're going for a nice pretty slaw. And if you feel like you have to cry, find someone to talk to, work out your problems. If you're crying so much that you can't see what you're cutting, stop, walk away. But I'm gonna bear through because I have videos to make. Okay. It's gonna be all right. <coughs> all right, we're good, we're good. Keep slicing. Get the tail, get the top. Get that one outer layer off of there. That tough bit doesn't quite get soft when it ferments, so it's not gonna be lovely. Any bruises you can clean up, and then we'll get our slices going. Again, nice and thin. 
get nice thin slices. If you want a chunky cortito, then hey, make big chunks. Don't cry so much that you cut yourself. We're, we're keeping our claw going. We're keeping that blade away from our little pink fingertips. And we will endeavor to get the onion sliced. Okay. All right, we got our onion in there. And then what's last is our, um, ah, oh boy. Ah, uh, onions are tough. Um, <laughs> oregano. Just uh, strip the, the, the woody stems out if, if you're using the fresh oregano. Um, I'm just, I'm, what am I doing? I'm grabbing it at the, the, the blossom end and, and pulling it down between my thumb and forefinger here. And I'm just stripping all the, I guess you can grab it at the root end too. Works just as well. And get the, get the stems out. If you're using this out of the McCormick's jar, um, you can just go right into your teaspoon. But I've got a, a tight handful here. Again, just kind of a rough chop on this once through. Do like a little julienne on these leaves. Oh, good onions in the summertime. So what do we got? We've got this beautiful mixture. Okay, we've got red onions, green, oregano. We've got the um, carrot shred in there. We've got our cabbage. Just give this a good mix. Break up all the pieces. Anything that's big and kind of, this is obviously like a, a kind of a, a rib from one of the leaves. Pick it out. And we're gonna start to kind of Give it a good massage. Break it up. What we're going to do is mix this around and break up all the the cabbage pieces where you've kind of got your slices of cabbage. These big ribs here aren't good eats. I'm going to break that up and we're going to get some salt in there. People get really excited about doing a 3% brine or you know a three and a half percent and they weigh the water and weigh the jar and weigh the vegetables. That's, it, it's way too much work. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna salt it to taste. I'm gonna start with about a tablespoon of salt here and I'm gonna get that in there. I'm gonna get some down here. Okay. I'm gonna mix that around a little bit and kind of keep a running total in your head of how much salt you put in there. I've got, that was probably a tablespoon. Mix it around, give me a little bit more. Maybe another tablespoon so far. So we, what do we got, two tablespoons in there. I'm gonna mix it around. And what I want to happen is I want the salt to break down the cell walls of all these vegetables. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna release a lot of the water that's inside the, the vegetables. And the vegetables are gonna give off some water. Because remember watching some of our other fermenting videos, we're doing an anaerobic fermentation. We're doing an anaerobic fermentation in brine. But I'm not going to add any water to this. I'm going to use the water that's in the cabbage, that's in the celery, that's, that's in the carrots, and use the salt to break the cell walls, let that water come out, and that'll, be the, that'll make the brine between the salt and that vegetable juice. Um, that, that, that will create the brine that we're going to use to submerge the vegetables and allow them to f ferment. So you can, if you want, I mean, if you want to get this done, if you want to, you know, finish this, then use a, use a muddler. Use, you know, your, 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 and get in there and just start, you know, working. Uh, um, yeah, this is an old uh, cabbage may uh, sauerkraut maker that's been in the family for a while. We don't really use this very often, um, not for the public channel. Maybe you want to pick up a pickle packer, um, hit, the, hit the links down below, and just go in and with your pickle packer and just start to break up some of the veg. You can kind of work a pattern across, make sure you get all of your vegetables broken up. 
and you can beat on it. If you don't have one of these, use a wine bottle. A wine bottle makes a great tamper. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to, you know, try to work through your arthritis and try to get some uh, some exercise and get a little bit of uh, mobility in your fingers, just give it a good massage. And I'm literally just grabbing pieces and squeezing, right? Grab and squeeze and kind of break it off. Stir it around. Mix up the bottom. Keep wishing that you had some kind of protection from onions when you're slicing onions. And I'm literally just squeezing and sort of mixing and bringing it up from the bottom. And you can see it's starting to get wet, right? It's starting to, that's what's happening. The, 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 the salt is, and the obvious constant pressure on the vegetable here. But I'm breaking it down. I'm kind of just getting into those cells in the vegetables and getting that moisture out of there. So as you're working through this and you're thinking, my God, why am I doing this? You don't have to. I'm doing it just to get through and finish the video. If you don't have strong hands, if you don't have the family sauerkraut maker, if you don't want to run out and buy a pickle packer on the link down below, put the, shred the vegetables, salt it, mix it, and then just let it sit. Let it sit for like an hour and then start going in and stirring it. And you'll find that just that, that, that hour or so of, of a, literally the vegetables sitting at room temperature with the salt on them, you'll get a good amount of, uh, of moisture coming out of them. But it, it's very therapeutic too. I mean, you can work out your aggressions, you know, you can think about your boss's head and you can squeeze well, you know, that's personal, but just whatever works for you. Again, if you, if you like doing the hand massage, if, you, if you've got a pickle packer and you just want to beat on it, but it just takes a couple of minutes to work through the vegetable here. After you've been working this through for a while and you're starting, you can see it's wet and you're starting to obviously, you know, get to where you're gonna, almost done working on it, take a little taste. And see, is it too salty? Not salty enough? Just salt it to a nice, it should be a little salty. I'll, I'll level with you. But you, you, you wanna just taste the salt. You know, kinda like when you salt things, you, you don't really wanna taste the salt, you wanna taste the food. With this, just a little saltier than that. Just go a little over on the salt. And I'll bet you, you'll have your salt ratio right down. So after it's been sitting for a while, go back in and start your manual manipulation of the kraut. You're always welcome to enjoy it. I like that fresh oregano a lot. And you're done when you can pick some up. Remember what I said, right? There's all that vegetable juice. That's literally, I added no water to this. That's just the water coming out of the vegetables. So we know that the cell walls are broken. Everything's open. Everything's ready for uh, that bacteria to get in there and, and work its delicious magic. So we wanna get ready to ferment this, okay? We're gonna pack this in jars and create an anaerobic environment. We're gonna create an environment where this is gonna begin to rot with good bacteria, with bacteria that are gonna make it taste good. Not bacteria that we're thinking of rotting, really, that's gonna putrefy it. Um, because we added the salt, and generally, the only bacteria that like to live in a real salty environment like that, with, with, this, uh, with this cabbage and vegetables, is lactobacters. Our um, bacteria that thrive on fructose and the vegetables, but, can withstand a, 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 a salty environment. So we're gonna pack this in these jars, and if we've got your pickle packer, also makes a great kind of tamping tool here. 
because we're creating an anaerobic environment, right? We want no air. We don't want any air down in there. Any air is an imitation of mold, is an imitation to bacteria that will do things to these vegetables that will make us not want to eat them. So I really want to pack it all down in there. If you don't have this, I mean, I've got pretty big hands and I can get mine down in there. We're gonna push it up, see the, see the juice coming up? Awesome. And I think we're gonna end up with just a, these are half gallon jars. If you wanna do this just the way that I did. But I've got a link to these jars down below. They're not terribly expensive for as often as I use them. I think we can get our whole recipe right down into one jar. How cool is that? Got our tamper here. And I could push all the veg down and literally get just liquid on top, but it floats up. So you want to try to figure out something that you can hold all that down with. I've got a couple options for you. The cheap way out is just to grab a plastic bag and without making too much more mess, take this plastic bag and push it down in the jar. We'll see, I'm gonna let some of the water spill out but basically just push it down and let that, you can see the juice come up around the edges of the bag, okay? And when you see that, you can seal this off and we're done. We're just gonna leave it like that for, like I said, it, in the warmth of the summer, this will probably take three days, four days to ferment and it'll be nice and sour and delicious and you can make a batch of pupusas and you're ready to go with it. Um, if you don't like fermenting with plastic, I've had a lot of people complain, John, plastic's horrible, it leaches terrible, terrible um, noxious chemicals into your cortito, then maybe just a glass weight, you can drop a glass weight in there and give it a little push. And uh, if there is any little bits of vegetables that come out on top of the, the juice, you can just kind of pick those out. If you want to get even Closer seal, I've got some um, Mason Tops does their um, fermenting caps here. And it's just a, it's a piece of silicone with a, a little nipple, kind of like a, like a little baby nipple, you know, with a, with a slit on the top. And pop that on there and just the, the canning ring. And what's gonna happen there? So basically what we're trying to do is I can't seal this shut. I'm not canning it because as this ferments, it's gonna give off carbon dioxide and we need some way for the carbon dioxide to get out, but I don't want the oxygen to get in. So there's that, like I said, there's that little slot here and it'll let the, the carbon dioxide out as it bubbles. So, I mean, whatever works for you. I mean, if you like the, the, the mason top stuff, I mean, you can do, uh, hit the link down below and grab some, some pickle pipes with the, um, the, the, the glass uh, pickle pebbles. This is just the, the canning ring that comes with the jars. Um, if this all seems like a little hoity-toity for you and you don't want to uh, spend your, your hard-earned cash on the, the pickle pebble and the pickle pipes, then um, don't do that. Go with just a, <laughs> the good old uh, American ingenuity here and uh, shove a plastic bag for half full of water in there. Give it a squeeze and that's good enough too. Like I said, you want to just create a situation where the oxygen can't get in but the water can get out. Now with my, with my kind of um, shotgun uh, uh, Ziploc method here, this, I mean, there's no air, there's no headspace, there's no, uh, there's no room in here. So this thing will leak, this will make a mess. It, it won't mold, I'll promise you that, but it, it's gonna, you know, some of this juice, as this starts to bubble up and foam a little bit, it's gonna release a lot of liquid and it's gonna run down the sides of the jar. Keep this in another container. If, if you want to be neat and clean, go with the, with the, pickle, the pickle pebbles and the pickle pipe. But if you want to do this, I'd really suggest putting this just in a little tray or a bowl or what have you. But 
you know, protect your countertops. This, this, uh, this is a recipe for disaster here. But we're gonna let this ferment. It's about 74, 76 degrees in here. This is probably gonna be done in about three days, and we'll uh, enjoy it then. So if you have any comments, if you have any questions about what we're doing here, leave a comment down below if you want to grab some pickle pipes and pickle pebbles or I don't know, a bag of box of Ziploc bags. Click some of the Amazon links down below. Those are really super. If you guys buy stuff on the Amazon links below, it costs you nothing more. And um, I get a couple of bucks from Amazon for uh, sending customers their way. So it really helps the channel out a lot and I can buy, you know, fancy camera equipment. So thanks for watching you guys. Check out my other videos. If you have any questions, leave a link down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Better Than Yourself.